scan up the facts, you begin to realize that something is very wrong with our attitude toward kids. There are over... I know that's a shocking statement, but look at the statistics. There are over 60 million children in this country, and 40 million receive inadequate medical attention, even before they're born. Many have birth defects we know how to prevent. A shocking number get illnesses that we know how to prevent. Measles when a vaccine exists? Polio? Yes. And it isn't just physical care that's lacking. Our children's emotional problems are virtually ignored. Here in America, they constitute one-third of all, of all the population, and yet they receive one-tenth of the funds that are going to community mental health centers. The incidences of suicide, alcoholism, depression in kids under age, the age of 14 is rising fast. Child abuse is widespread. This government spends $250 million a year to maintain children in foster care. But very little money goes for services that might prevent families from breaking up to begin with. This nation needs a new system of support for its children. I want to be part of that system as a United States Senator. I believe the question was, why have I become so involved with child health care legislation? Well, you've certainly answered it, Mr. Ryan. From Councilman Frank Ryan's office here in Riverside, this is Dan Arno for ABC News. That was terrific. Oh, Beautiful. Did I go on too long? No, no, no. In fact, uh, we're running way ahead of schedule. <laughs> yeah, because nothing broke. Nobody tripped over the lights and everybody was quiet. Oh, yeah. The whole day should go so easy. <laughs> oh, it will. Frank's very good luck. <laughs> he was superb. Yeah, that was really terrific, Frank. I can hardly wait to see it. Uh, when's that on? This late evening news? Uh, yeah, sometime between 11.15 uh, and 11.30 tonight. All right. Oh, Excuse me. These are news people, and Mr. Ryan's going to be on network television tonight, coast to coast. He was wonderful. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, well, we weren't absolutely sure it was going to be today, but they got here bright and early, and everything went without a hitch. Oh. Mary. Hi. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, uh, wait till we see the performance. Oh. Mary, this is Dan Arno. Dan, this is my sister, Mary Finelli. Evan, we met in front of the Americana last fall, Channel R News, right? <laughs> I was hoping you'd forgotten. Uh, we had a little race trying to get to the mayor for an interview. He won. Uh, I went away <laughs> limping. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I promise not to get violent now. I just have to let Frank know about his niece's birthday party, and then I'll disappear. Uh, we've had to move it back half an hour. Is 4.30 okay? Little John and I will be there with our bells on. Good. Well, that's a pretty tight schedule for you. Don't you have a 6 o'clock live news show? Not anymore. Mm -hmm. Mary is in the process of disengaging herself from Channel R so she can come on as my second press secretary. <laughs> well, well then, we'll uh, be meeting under more pleasant circumstances. Mm -hmm. Dan, I'll never kick you again. Oh, well, <laughs> See you later. Uh, her daughter's birthday party? Yeah, little Ryan. He's a year old today. Cake and apple juice for all those children, not to mention all the adults that'll be there. That Mary is a girl of enormous energy. Yeah. If uh, Frank's going to be there with his son and all these other kids, uh, we could get some great shots. They might use it under the audio, part of the audio, or under the credits at the end of the show. Oh. Brilliant idea. Well, listen, um, you guys got time, I hope, don't you? Uh, Brian? Uh, let's see, Central Park, we finish about 3.30. Uh, okay. Boom. Beautiful. Very yeah. wonderful idea. Huh? Could um, Dan come by the party before... Ryan, before it all breaks up, he'd like to take some pictures of Frank uh, with kids. Oh, fine, if, if it's all right with you. Thanks, Mary. Ray. It's a good thing the apartment's clean. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Mary. Well, thank you. Thank you. Ryan. Yeah. Uh, we have the address. We'll be there at uh, 5.30. Great, thanks. Yes. Okay, bye. Thanks so much. All right, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. See you. Bye. Goodbye. <sighs> What's the matter, Frank? Don't you like the idea? No, I love it, but uh, we may have a problem.
In today's episode, the role of Ray Woodard is being played by Judith McGilligan. One day, my son, never before, 100 pounds or six system, you can do it. Fooled. Good morning. Morning. How do you feel? I don't know. Tired? No. It's gone. What is? I thought things were getting better yesterday, but they're not. It's 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 gone. I can't get out of bed. I just I can't even move at all. Delia, look, why don't you just lie there and think about your session with Dr. Pagano, huh? Just give it a few minutes. Do you remember what you told me last night? I remember what I told you, but look, things yesterday seemed like they were going to be good. I'm telling you, they're gone. Roger, I told a lot of lies. And I made a lot of problems with myself. I kept on thinking that Faith was always chasing after Patty. Well, she wasn't. Look, it's just nothing but words. Something happened to me yesterday, but I'm telling you, it's gone. No, dear. Something did happen. You made an enormous step. Dr. Pagano was, was right behind you. Now, what did he say? He said that I was being mature. <laughs> That's right. You're so used to having people tell you that you, you're acting like a child. Look, I know it's terrifying to have to give up those old patterns. They hurt, but at least you were used to them. Now, this is like a... Uncharted territory. So, of course, it's going to be strange. Look, why don't you get out of bed, look at the paper, have a cup of coffee, huh? You'll get your bearings soon enough. He also tried to make me feel that I could be without the Ryans, that I would be all right. Well, I can't be all right. I'm, I'm scared. I'm more scared than I've ever been before. Delia, he didn't try to make you feel anything. You realized that you could grow up. And what was your first reaction? A smile. Well, you're, uh, you're entitled to a second reaction. Look, as long as you're in touch with your feelings, that means that you are making progress. You're being so sweet to me. I'm being your friend. Nothing more, nothing less. I think... I think maybe, maybe if I had you, maybe I wouldn't need anything else. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of me, okay? Delia, I am giving you a place to stay. I am covering your psychiatric fees, and I'm taking a supportive attitude, but I am not taking care of you. Yes, you are taking care of me. You're staying with me, and you're talking with me, and it's going to make me feel better. No, 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 no. Only you can help yourself with Dr. Pagano's help. Delia, I am here for you in a general sense. But your problems belong to you, and I can't take them for you. I, I don't want you to. Good. Now, what time is your, uh, your session with Dr. Pagano, huh? Ah, uh, thank you. It's at 11 o'clock. Well, that gives you almost an hour to uh, shower, get dressed, have a little breakfast. I, uh, I left a Danish for you on the counter. Where are you going? To the hospital. You're going, you're going now without me? Uh, yes. No, Roger, Roger, really, you, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. Please, don't leave me alone here. I'm afraid. Delia, it so happens that I have a job. Now, Clem has been covering for me for the last couple of weeks, but now it is back to business as usual. Roger. I'll die if you leave me alone here. I'm begging you. Delia, that is nonsense. 
Now, look, when I leave here, why don't you just uh, sit on the couch and calm down for five minutes, huh? Go to the hospital early. I, I left the keys on the counter and remember to take I don't. I don't want the keys, okay? Because I'm going to lose them. I'm going to forget them. I'm going to be locked out of here. Now, I can't go through that again. Delia, when I leave, you will have approximately a half an hour to be here by yourself. Just turn on the radio. It'll keep you company, huh? Now, nothing is going to happen. I'll call you later. Roger. If you leave me alone, I'll kill myself. I'm gonna get a knife, and I'm gonna kill myself. Well, Frank, don't you like the idea of a camera butting in on the party? Mary says that's okay. Then what is the problem? Jill and Edmund are going to be there. Would you like me to hold your calls for a little while? Yeah, please. I had no idea about that. Well, look, look, we still may be all right. Little Edmund can be a guest. Jill can be Mary's friend. We don't have to announce who's related to who. Yeah, but suppose Dan asks, what's Jill supposed to say? <coughs> well, she's Jill Coleridge. Edmund is Edmund Coleridge. Well, I am just wondering how many people still associate your name with hers. Local politicians. Oh, no, it's more than that, Frank. There was all that publicity in the paper before you got divorced. Look, do you want me to get in touch with Arno and have him call it off? Let me think. Well, that interview is going to air whether they film the birthday party or not, right? That's true. That's right. So what are the advantages? You got more exposure. The public associating Frank with children. That's right. That way they're more familiar with your child health care ideas. Exactly. The whole notion of drawing attention to that issue and my campaign on a national level. Frank, if we could just be sure that another chance like this is going to come along. You get the ball. You run with it. I'll talk to Jill. Yeah, yeah, Jill. She'll probably go along with leaving early. A little, a little Edmund wouldn't mind. No, no, that wouldn't work. Huh? That would be worse than skipping it altogether. They had to leave the Mother's Day party early when the press showed. It was pretty miserable. Yes, I doubt Jillian would uh, want to put herself through an experience like that again. Okay. I'll be back. Look, Frank, use the phone here. Bob and I can work in the other room. Sure. No, I want to discuss this with her in person. You do realize that we're supposed to meet Dave in his office in a half an hour? Well, Dave will have to wait a few minutes. I'll have Georgia give him a call. All right. You know, Frank, we could have another party just for the family, have a cake, the whole works, everything like that. Yeah. Thanks for suggesting that. If I am late, uh, you and Dave start without me. Fine. Good luck. As the year ends... It was just... HBO. So if you play around with them, it could be very messy, messy and painful. You laugh at me when I'm dead. Well, fortunately, I have about ten minutes to spare. I'll give you um, several of them. God's sake, Didi, will you come out of there? Oh, yeah? What are you going to do about it? Carve you up into little pieces. Bring the knife. You know, uh... Dr. Pagano says that you're being fairly rational, but it seems to me that you're uh, disagreeing with him. Roger, when you get back here, I might not be alive. Did you, did you realize that uh, suicide is not all that simple? I mean, do you know what would happen if you if you tried and failed? I mean, given your, your past history, I'm sure they'd lock you up for a very, very long time. I am not going to fail terrifies you that much to be alone, huh? Yes, it does. Well, you can't have that. It's a very, not a very nice solution, but I guess it's the best thing for the moment. Does that, does that mean that you're going to stay? No. No, but you won't be alone. I'll check you into the hospital. I will not go into that psychiatric clinic. Never. Julia, what alternatives do you give me? Look, I'm not going to give up my job and sit around here and hold your hand. 
Now, I can go out and hire a psychiatric nurse to be with you all day long, but if you're so disturbed that you'd require 24 hours care, then you belong in a hospital. No, I, I don't. I don't. All right, just stay with me today. Okay, I'll, I'll be fine tomorrow. On the contrary, Dee, you will fight twice as hard tomorrow. Look, I'm not fighting, Roger. Do you under Why are you so cruel to me? <laughs> Celia, you know as well as I do that I am being incredibly patient with you. <coughs> I am being so kind that I barely recognize myself. But deep down inside, I am the same Roger as ever. You better keep it in your mind that no matter how... how sadly disturbed you are right now, that you cannot play games with Roger. You don't care about me. Time to go. Roger. If you go, that's the same thing as saying that you wish I was dead. Well, you better talk that one over with Pagano, too. Look, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out there on the street dressed just like this. Well, you'll get into a hospital then, but at least you'll be dressed for it. Wait. Remember? Remember when we used to have such fun together? And you always used to say, one more hour. It's just one more hour. Come on. Come on. Did you? I'm torn between impatience and boredom. But in either case, I'm leaving. You are going to be very sorry. Ah, well, you have a choice, Delia. Either death, hospitalization, or shaping up. Now, I trust that you'll choose the sensible course. I hate you. Have a good session with Pagano. Roger! Roger! walking down the beach. Predictable. Take a holiday from the holidays on SoapNet. Jen, make four duplicate copies and file accordingly, okay? And listen, there's a lot of correspondence uh, piling up on your desk. It would be terrific if we... Hi. Hi. What am I interrupting? Uh, nothing. Nothing important. Certainly didn't expect to see you here. Do you mind? No, no. Uh, did Bob get in touch with you? He called after you left. Yeah, it was about a network news interview. I just taped it, as a matter of fact. <laughs> That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. When will it air? Tonight. Late news, ABC. Oh, well, good heavens. How come you're not uh, jumping up and down, clicking your heels? Well, I was, but uh, something got in the way. All right. Why don't you tell me what you're worried about? You. Look, um, I have forgotten all about last night. I'm sorry I was a grouch. I'm sorry I woke you up. <laughs> Let's not have any more, uh, polite breakfasts. Hmm. I'd rather not eat anything at all. <laughs> I'm afraid there's something else. About me? Yeah. I don't know how to say this other than straight out. Dan Arno wants to send a crew to Ryan's birthday party. I don't know I, whether I got him interested in child health care legislation or what, but uh, he wants to get some shots of me with the kids. Of whom Edmund is one. And uh, Dan Arno may ask who he is, who his mother is, and then he'll remember I worked on your campaign. And then he will remember various and sundry gossip, put two and two together, and we'll wind up on national TV. Well, let's not allow even a little of that to happen. Could we plan for another party, say, for Ryan, uptown at my place or, or, or at the folks? We might. Because God knows I want you to be there, Jill. But how often does an opportunity like this come along? I suppose that you've talked to Mary about this. Yeah, for all of uh, two seconds. She doesn't mind the party being on the news. I'm sure it didn't occur to her that it uh, might cause complications for us. You don't have any complications. Edmund and I will uh, stay home. I'm sorry. Thank you. Think nothing of it. I'll call Mary and explain it. 
Okay, I'll talk to her too. Ah, oh, after all the excitement's died down. Yeah. I have a meeting after the party, so, uh, well, I'll try. I'll try to get back as early as I can. Look, in that case, why don't we uh, see each other in the morning? I mean, it's a free evening. I'll enjoy it. Wow. I hope you don't feel compelled to uh, play chess with Seneca again. Ah, I see. Would you like to elaborate on that? No, I think I've put my foot into it quite enough. Uh-huh. Smart man. How angry are you? Oh, well, I don't uh, mind Dan Arno going after a good story. But there are other things that bother me. Edmund and Ryan are cousins. Mary invited us to this party, and your attitude... Oh, maybe this is just not the time to go into this. No, it is. It is, and I wish I could, but I'm due at Dave Feldman's. Well, then you better go. And send our love to everybody. If I'm late, uh, this time I won't wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why don't uh, you get a sitter, call Faith, go out to dinner? Because Faith is going to be at the party. <clears throat> it's all right. It's all right. Have fun. Oh, but do me a favor. Don't tell uh, uh, Dan Arno that I said hello. <laughs> Yes, I, I'd like to talk to uh, Dr. Bolak, please. 